If you live anywhere in South Orange County and are even thinking of selling your home, I have some very important information for you. It breaks my heart to see so many sellers make the same mistakes over and over when it is all so avoidable. You see, leaving money on the table and giving away the profit that you have in your home known as equity is the mistake that so many owners make prior to selecting their agent. If I might be so lucky as to be on your consideration list, or you have that one, two, or three agents that you're thinking of talking to, the following information might lace your pockets with tens of thousands of dollars. You see, having sold over three quarters of a billion dollars worth of real estate right here in South Orange County over the past 28 consecutive years, I think I have some valuable information that you'll want to listen to. Today, I'm going to give you the five mistakes to avoid before your home goes on the market and before you finalize your decision on who will list your home. Choosing the expert is very important. Please listen to this entire video as I will be saving the most important recommendations of the mistakes to avoid for the end. With zero out of pocket, lacing your pocket with thousands and thousands of dollars, that seems pretty appealing to me and I think it's gonna be appealing to you. Pretty cool, right? Let's get started. All right, let's get started. But before I do, I wanna make sure that you understand that these mistakes are not your fault. The mistakes to avoid is our responsibility to educate you so that you don't commit the mistakes. All right. We as agents do this every day. You as the average home seller do it every seven to 10 years on average. So I want to be clear, this is not the blame game. So fully understanding what's going to be a good spend of money, out of pocket money as an investment known as the return on your investment is really important to understand. It's critical when preparing a home for sale. This might take days, it might take weeks, it might even take a month or two, but a highly skilled professional such as myself acting as a consultant is very important in this process. This goes beyond picking the right paint color and, and I will share with you, there are only two paint colors to consider if you're thinking of repainting a wall, a room or an entire house. The builders know what those two colors are, I and other great agents know what those two colors are, and there are only two. And one complementary group of carpet colors to complement these paint colors are important to consider if you're going to paint and carpet. So those are important considerations, as well as large and small fix-it items. You see, we want to avoid as many negative speed bumps in the buyer's eyes as possible. And doing this upfront is very important. Since we're talking about paint and carpet colors, and there are only two colors to pick from, let me share with you that although 62% of Americans identify blue as their favorite color, blue is not my favorite color for wall color or carpet color. Avoid blue, avoid green. Sorry if I'm offending anybody, but this is a very important decision to make. If you have blue or green carpet, you might want to consider replacing it in advance. What will cost you two or three or four thousand dollars up front can return fifteen or twenty thousand dollars on the back end. So this would be an important consideration. We want to is eliminate as many negative thoughts in the buyer's mind as possible. That's number five so this brings us to number four which are buyers positive and negative emotional triggers what do i mean by an emotional trigger well a negative emotional trigger might have to do with depersonalizing the home sometimes it sounds like sterilization and to a point that may be a little accurate but very strong personalization of a property will actually have a negative psychological impact. For example, too many personal photos, too many personal paintings, too many personal awards and trophies. I once had a seller who had an entire wall full of medieval swords and knives. 
So this might have been their thing, but it probably was not the buyer's thing. And sometimes it takes a neutral eye, such as myself, to look at a property and to identify some things that you, the homeowner, may be accustomed to and have assumed to be acceptable, but in the majority of the buyer's eyes, because remember, we want to be an everybody property. And I know it's hard to be an everybody property, but we want to make an attempt to be appealing to all buyers, a very wide range of buyers. So depersonalizing a home is very important. And I'd be happy to walk anybody through that process. I'm not talking about dramatic changes, but sometimes just thinning out some personal property like that will be a good move. Now, there are some positive emotional triggers that we need to pay attention to, such as making the kitchen look like a warm and inviting kitchen to cook in, making an office look like a functional office, making a game room look like a fun game room. Sometimes something as simple as a game board on a table will add that positive psychological influence that we want to invoke in a buyer. These are multi, multi, multi-million dollar projects. When a builder develops a project, a housing tract, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars in home sales. They know what's going on. They know how to stage a property. Now, I'm not talking about professional staging because I actually think that's avoidable in almost all cases, but slight details when it comes to negative and positive emotional triggers are very important. That's number four. All right, number three, preparing your home for online presence. This is where the buyers are looking today for homes online. I think before we start to talk about preparing your home for online presence, we need to make sure that your real estate agent is planning to implement a very robust online marketing strategy. Will your home be featured on the important websites? Will they be on the broker site? Will they be on the agent's personal site? Will it be on Zillow? Will it be on Realtor.com? Will it be on Trulia, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram? Will it be on your property address domain name.com, like 123mainstreet.com, your address? Will it be on Juai for the Asian market? Will it be on Proxio for the international buyer's market? Will it be on luxuryrealestate.com or the Wall Street Journal for the luxury buyer? Ask yourself before you hire an agent, is the agent's plan to give you that much exposure online? And if not, try to find an agent who will. Now, in preparation for that kind of exposure, we need to make sure that the property is ready for the photography, the aerial photography, and the video photography. Is your agent that you're going to hire going to hire the one-stop shop, typically giving discounts for all three, where none of them are really that good? or will they deal with a specialist in each of those areas? For example, I only work with one photographer. He offers a discount if I use him for photos and video, but I know the video isn't as good as my videographer. And my videographer will give me a discount if I use them for still photography, but their still photography is not as good as the other guy. So I use specialists to make sure that my still photography is magazine quality and the video photography and aerial photography that gets blended in a video presentation is movie quality. Is the preparation worth it because of the exposure that your agent plans to implement? The answer to that should be yes. And remember day one, is not the day the home goes on the market. Day one is the day the photography and the videography and the aerial photography is shot. That's when you want to ready the home for the as is condition. That's when it needs to be perfect. You'll have to wait another seven to 10 to 14 days more or less after that day one till the home actually hits the market. But in preparation for the home sale, be zeroing in on day one when all the marketing will be prepared for the home sale. That's really important. Number three is making sure that your home is prepared for day one 
the day of the photo shoot, the day of the video, and does your agent plan to leverage that media everywhere they possibly can? That's number three. All right, as we head towards the end of this list, bringing us to number two, one of the least expensive, actually no out-of-pocket costs, nothing monetarily out of your pocket other than just some time. Number two is clutter. The biggest mistake or one of the largest mistakes I see sellers make in their attempt to sell a home is the amount of clutter in a home. Look, we live one way and we sell another. If you were to go to my home right now, my home is in no condition to put on the market. Again, we live a certain way and we sell a certain way. My recommendation is to start clearing the clutter early. Most people wait till the very end in a tap hazard and not done properly. You want to make your home look like a builder model home. As you tour new properties, new builder construction, these homes are decorated beautifully, but what you'll see missing is any clutter. Kitchen is a big magnet for clutter. Home office, big magnet for clutter. Bathrooms, master bedroom, all these areas where knickknacks, unnecessary knickknacks are laying around, please thin it out. You can never be too thin when selling a home. Get rid of as much clutter as you can, put it in the garage if you need to, put it in boxes, store it in the garage. Nobody cares if there's extra boxes in the garage. That's the best place to get rid of the clutter. And my recommendation is to start with the least used rooms first. The rooms that you typically don't use on a regular basis, the guest room, secondary bathrooms, if we're not using them, start with those rooms first. Secondary bedrooms, the bedrooms that aren't used as much as the master bedroom, the master bathroom, the kitchen, those rooms are highly used and you're going to need or want those knickknacks around. Start in the rooms that you use least first, thin them out dramatically, and work yourself up to the most used rooms, leaving the master bedroom, master bathroom, and kitchen probably for last. But start early enough so you don't feel rushed. I'm talking sometimes weeks, weeks in advance, and really pace yourself to get rid of as much clutter as you can. The elimination of clutter can honestly return 10, 20, $30,000 in value because the emotional impact that clutter has on a buyer's mind is tremendous. So please clear the clutter, start early, least used rooms first, stored in the garage, anything personalized that you can get rid of, make it look like a model home. That's number two. And this brings us to number one. Another one that costs nothing other than a little bit of planning and thought, but will return thousands and thousands and sometimes less headaches than any other thing. And that would be a careful selection of the agent and a careful selection long in advance of when you plan to list the home. I cannot share with you how many countless appointments I go on where I will receive a phone call schedule an interview time in the next day or two or three, as long as their schedule permits, visit with the seller and hear from the seller, we'd like to be on the market this weekend. It just doesn't work that way. It takes a lot of preparation and a lot of times counseling during the period of time of getting the home ready with the agent that you feel comfortable with. Could be weeks, could even be months. I have worked with clients for two or three months in advance prepping the home to come on the market and getting comfortable in the relationship so then when we launch everything is flawless in terms of the marketing so some of the elements that are important in selecting a great agent would be let's start with the three r's reviews references and referrals you should pay attention to reviews they're not the only source of information but reviews are important i would suggest looking at google looking at Zillow. Those are probably the most populated review sites for real estate agents. And I would read a little bit about what the client specifically says as to their positive attributes. Once you get past some reviews, ask for referrals from your friends, friends that you respect, 
friends that you believe are critical of the service that they receive. The person that loves every restaurant, loves everything that you wear is probably not the best reference source. You want to get references from someone who's critical about somebody's performance. And once provided with the referral, get references from that agent. So if I were referred by another past client of mine and I had an initial conversation with somebody thinking of selling their home, I would want to provide and the agent that you're speaking with should want to provide references, recent references. And the reason I stress recent is be leery of the agent who gives you a reference of two or three months ago, two or three years ago, and three or four or five years ago as the cherry picked references. You want the most recent and consecutive, if you can get them from the agent that you're speaking with. Ask them literally, who are the last two or three sellers that you represented in a transaction and may I speak with them? The agent should give you the contact information with that person's permission, of course, and then you should talk and have lengthy conversations with the references to the agent that you're considering. So talk to the agent very early in the process. Reviews, references, and referrals are all important. Experience is also important. I've been doing this 28 years, have over a thousand transactions in my history, and have sold over three quarters of a billion dollars all in this local marketplace, South Orange County. That is important and should resonate with somebody conducting an interview. So if you live in a different area outside of my market area, make sure that the person that you are speaking with has sufficient experience, very familiar with the contract, and just appears to be bright and with it when you're speaking with them during the interview process. I do recommend speaking to at least obviously one agent, but one, two or three. I have spoken to sellers who are interviewing 12 or 15 agents. I think that's ridiculous. If you have not been able to thin out the herd a little bit better than that, unless you're charging them admission charge into your home, don't interview that many agents. You'll simply become confused and overwhelmed with what every agent has to offer. One, two or three agents should be sufficient. Statistically, 67% of home sellers interview one agent. So there's nothing wrong with picking the agent that you think you may want to list with. Interview that agent. If the interview process goes well, don't feel compelled that you have to interview another or two other agents, but one, two or three should be sufficient. The agent that you're interviewing should have a written marketing proposal for you upon their first visit they should share with you exactly what they plan to do. We get paid to do three things. We get paid to market your home, do something for our commission. So market the home, make sure the escrow goes smoothly and we can negotiate top price and top terms for you as the seller and protect you after the close of escrow to make sure there are no repercussions, nobody comes back and sues you or disclosures are made in a proper fashion whereby somebody can legally come after the seller in a transaction or after the transaction. So negotiate the transaction, market the transaction and protect you after the close of ESCO are all very important. With regards to the marketing campaign, Make sure that when you're speaking to the agent, their written marketing campaign includes things like open house, should you want them, the agent should provide them. Print marketing, such as postcards, because we have found in our market area, there are certain neighborhoods that are very inclined to upgrade into another move up neighborhood. In the years that I've been doing this, I've been able to identify where those other neighborhoods may be that we call feeder neighborhoods into the communities where I'm listing properties. So this should be really important to you is to have an agent with that kind of experience level to know where to saturate print marketing. Besides print marketing, the photography should be off the chart, excellent magazine quality photos, aerial photography to incorporate in, into the video presentation of the property. Video is extremely important. The homes that have video presentations have four times, 400 times the exposure as non videoed properties. So that would be paramount for me if I were interviewing an agent, make sure the photography is top quality, the video photography is done well. The video photography incorporates 
uh, aerial photography, heavy use of social media. You would be surprised how many buyers come out of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Don't freak out, but yes, TikTok does produce buyers for properties. Newspaper advertising, somewhat important, but if the agent is all about a magazine or magazine exposure, they're investing their dollars for them, not for you. If I were to pick up the phone and try to get a magazine ad ran for one of my properties, this month is already on the shelf. Next month is probably sold out. And the following month, it's usually too late. So I'm looking at three to four months exposure for a property of mine in any decent home magazine. And those home magazines are strictly to promote the agent, not the property. It's the bait and switch, if you will. So those are dollars not well spent for you, the seller. The importance of internet sites cannot be overlooked. Besides social media, which I did mention, the internet sites are very important where your media, the photography, the video, the aerial photography, and every aspect of the home can be displayed, not only to the general public, but to agents. We have a responsibility of marketing to agents and the buyers. And we at the Aura Group know and believe that we do a very good job of that. You also want an agent who is reasonably accessible. If you call and leave a voicemail, a minute, minute and a half or two, that would be acceptable. A day, day and a half or two is not. So if the agent is lax in getting back to you, especially for an interview, that should be a warning sign. The agent should be very reactive to voicemail, be very accessible. And lastly, the agent should have a staff, a staff of some sort. The one man shop or one woman shop agent is probably somebody who is easily overwhelmed and not prepared in running their business like a business. Whether it be a virtual assistant, a transaction coordinator, or some staff level, that's important. When you call the doctor's office and have a question about billing or medication and the doctor answers the office phone all the time, that for me would be a warning sign. A doctor has staff, lawyers have staff, real estate agents should have staff. And that's not to say that we at the Aura Group will have you deal with just staff. I'm extremely hands-on in a transaction and your agent who you're interviewing should display that. But staff is important so that I'm allowed to focus on the most important things for my clients and maybe not answer the most simple of questions. So those are some of the things that I think are important in terms of interviewing an agent and what you think an agent quality should be. But please speak to an agent early in the process. Don't wait a week or 10 days, think you're gonna interview somebody and jump into having your home on the market. That is one of the worst mistakes that I am personally exposed to being the agent hired as an agent. The interview happens and they choose me as the agent. I always walk in with a written marketing campaign, as I've explained. I hardly ever not take a listing based on an interview because my marketing plan is so robust and that was probably number one. So once the interview process is conducted, when someone says to me, hey, you're the guy we'd like to have on a home on the market this weekend, that's impossible. It can't be done. So those are my five most important things to focus on when thinking about hiring an agent or getting your home on the market. If I can help you, please reach out. If you'd like to subscribe, I do have other videos, so please feel free to subscribe. And there are some other videos that I'll market on this website, on this video, so you can tune into some of my other videos to help get comfortable with me or help learn more about the selling process. Randy Ora with Berkshire Hathaway, changing lives, one home at a time.